Okay, so this is making a spreadsheet about buying a house. Um, so it's going to be slightly artificial situation. I'm going to make some assumptions and simplifications, but let's just assume that you start by borrowing three million. These are Danish kroner to buy a house. So uh, amount owed. Three million. I can just tidy things up a bit, stretch the cell out, um, highlight the column, center things so it looks a bit neater. And that's starting in uh, the current month, which as I do this is April 2017. As soon as I, as soon as I press enter, it's recognized that as a date format, so it's kind of converted that into April 17, uh, which is good. And then the next month is going to be May 2017. And as soon as I press enter, it's recognized that as a date and converted it. And then now that we've got a pattern there, I can highlight two of them and then click this little dot on the corner and then drag that down. And it fills in further cells, recognizing the pattern a month more each time. Okay, so amount owed um, 3,000. Amount repaid. Um, and then let's just stretch that out to make it look right. Let's say I can afford to repay 10,000 a month. Boom. And then the bank might charge me interest. So interest uh, charged. And let's just say in the first month they don't charge me any interest. So that's zero. So that's my initial figures. I'll just tidy it up a bit by centering the cells um, and resizing them. So it's all a bit neater. And there we have that. I'm just going to make this into a nice table by putting some borders around things. So I'll highlight them and then click for borders. And there's some borders. So it's all a bit clearer. Right, in the next month, the amount I owe will be whatever I owed before, minus anything I repay, but then plus any interest I'm charged. So I'm going to do that as a formula. So in the cell for the next month's amount, it's going to be equals what I owed before, which is the 3 million. Now I can just click on the cell and it puts D4 because that's the cell it's in, minus anything I repay. And again, I'll just click on the cell E4 and it will put in E4 for me. But then plus any interest I'm charged, which is here in F4. So I'll just click on F4 and press enter. And it's worked that out as uh, 2.99 million. Okay, then the amount repaid, I'm just going to say that's the same amount as before. So I'm going to put equals and then the amount before, which is that. And then the interest charged, well, let's say it's zero again. Okay, and then in the next month again, uh, the amount I owe is going to be equal to what I owed before, which is in that cell, D5, um, minus anything I managed to repay, which is in cell E5, and I can just click on it and it puts E5, but then plus any interest they charge me, which is in F5, and I just click on it and it does it. So when I press enter, there it is recalculated. Let's say the amount repaid is equal to what it was the previous month. There, boom. And let's say the interest charged is zero again, boom. Let's just tidy these up by uh, centering things like that. And then now that I've got a pattern, I can start to copy and paste. So every time 
the amount owed is going to be a formula that says what I owed before minus what I repaid plus any interest charged. Every time the amount repaid is going to be the same as the previous month and um, every month the interest charge for now is going to be zero but we're going to change that. So I'm going to take that row with those three cells in with formulas, copy it, so uh, that's Command C on my Mac, Control C on a PC, and then I'm going to take a whole load of rows and paste it down. That's uh, Command V on a Mac, Control V on a PC. And you can see the amount that I owe going down gradually. But the thing is, um, you get charged interest when you borrow money from a bank. Now I'm going to say that the interest rate uh, interest rate is 2%. I'm going to put it in a uh, in a cell up there. I could highlight that just to make it interesting and clearer. I could make the font a bit bigger just because that's important information. So let's do that. And then I'm going to format that. So format uh, cells so that it's two decimal places there. So let's just say I, I took out the loan in April. Let's say that every April it's going, they're going to charge me interest. So in the interest charged cell for April 2018, the next year, I'm going to have equals 2% of whatever I owe. So let's say equals 2% which is in cell J4, so I just click on cell J4, and then times, which is the little star, the asterisk, whatever I owe. So 2% times whatever I owe gives me 2% of whatever I owe, which means that I'm paying 57,600 in interest. And then you can see on the next month, the amount I owe has actually gone up a bit because even though I've paid some off, the interest has been added on. So you can see the amount I owe going down, 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 and then up again. Let's do that for every April. So I'm going to copy the cell for April and paste it into the next April, uh, April 2019, down here. Now, so I'm going to click Control V and paste it, but it's not done what I expected because it put zero in there. And the reason for that is, um, if you look at what it's got in the cell for April 2018, it's got J4 times D16. So it's saying the cell up here times the cell over here. When you go down to April 2019, it's trying to do the same thing. So it's looking for the cell up here for the interest times the cell over there. But actually, you want it to always look in the same cell for the interest. You want it to always look in J4 for the interest. So what you've got to do is make that an absolute reference and stick a dollar sign in front of the J and a dollar sign in front of the 4 so that it always looks in that same cell that's at the top and not and not try to move the reference down for the fact that you've moved to a different cell. So when I paste that down with the new absolute reference, it's kept J4 as it is, because I always want to look in J4, but it's changed D16 into D28 because it knows that I want to look in a different row uh, in column D. Okay, so now that I've got an absolute reference and it's always looking in J4 for the interest rate, then when I copy it down to the next April, just try and find it there, April 2020, there's a number in there. Okay, now that I've got a whole year's worth, what I can do is highlight whole years and start to paste them down and see what happens 
after several years. In fact, if I highlight a number of rows that's um, a multiple of uh, 12, so like I've got 56 rows highlighted here, then I can just paste them and get whole years at a time. And then if I do the same thing as I did before, copy the pattern of this down to paste some more months in, then I can very quickly kind of expand the whole thing down. So let's see what happens if I go all the way down for, well, let's say 50 years into the future, all the way down to um, April 2067. So just uh, waiting for this to go. Boom. All right, so July, July 2066, that'll do. And then if I keep pasting whole years of this, so copy a whole year's worth and then just paste several years at a time. I'm just going to make sure that whatever I'm, the number of rows I'm pasting, whatever it is, I'm just going to make sure it's always a multiple of 12 so that I'm doing 12 months. Okay, so I've got 240 rows highlighted here. So I'm going to paste uh, 240 months, which is 20 years. There we go. Get an idea what's happening. Can copy those and just paste another 20 years very quickly. Boom. And then I've, I've gone kind of way beyond the, the end of this. So and having done that, I can see when the, when the house is paid off. So the amount that I owe goes from positive into negative by, let's have a look at it, by May 2051. So when you get to May 2051, then you've paid the thing off because the amount you owe has gone uh, below zero. So May 2051, that is a 34-year mortgage from when I started in April 2017. I might think that's way too long to be owing money, so I might play with this and see what happens if I kind of stretch myself and pay 14,000 every month. So I type in 14,000 and then look at what effect that has on the other numbers. And I can see it's paid off by February 2039. So that's better. What happens if I borrow less money? If I um, buy a different house that only costs 2.6 million, so 2,600,000. Let's just check I've got the right number of zeros in that. Uh, one more. Boom. Then that's paid off by uh, August 2035. What if the interest rate changes? So I go to a different bank, they offer me 1.8% uh, interest rate. Then the effect that has is uh, that it's paid off by March 2035. So you can play around with the numbers and see the effect of uh, different things on your mortgage. I can actually make a graph of how my mortgage is going. So let's just have a look at this one. Um, if I just highlight the months and the amounts of money until it's paid off. Dun, 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 taking its time. There we go, just kind of up to there. And then I do a line graph of that. So I've, I'm going to click on charts and press line graph. So you can get a nice graph of the amount of money owed going down. 
Yeah, can if I just delete some of the bits I don't want on it. So if you look at it, um, you can see it going down, and then every April it goes up a bit as they put the interest on, and then keeps going down up a bit. So it's quite interesting to see the effect on that graph of changing various numbers. So let's say the interest rate goes up to 5% suddenly. Then every time it goes up, it spikes up quite a bit, and the rate at which you're paying it off uh, slows down, and then you haven't paid it off uh, by the time you wanted to. Um, but then if you put your repayments up to, let's say you can suddenly afford to pay 20000 a month, let's see what that does. Um, there we go, so uh, you're repaying it by, you can see on the graph, April 2032 or so. Um, what if you borrow less money? So let's say you borrow 2.4 million. Does that to the graph. Uh, interest rate suddenly goes up to 6% for some reason, or 10%. Or something happens, it goes down to 1.5%. A lot better. So you can get a visual idea of um, how your mortgage is going by doing this line graph.